chasing the police every single day. Say hi, Andy. I'm recording you. I got you. Yes, they are. You know what's really criminal? What's that? Those knee-high socks. I know, but that's what the brown shirts wore. <laughs> Moving on to unfinished business. Hearing to impose penalty, failure to pay fine. Case number 22-82079. Code Compliance Officer Lavosia Price Jr. Respondent Andrew Brian Sheets. Address of violation 75 Taylor Avenue. Violation of Chapter 26, Section 11.5, Subparagraph Z and violation of Chapter 9A, Section 9A-13, subparagraph C-8, display of indecent sign, and violation of Chapter 9A, Section 9A-10, subparagraph H, and violation of Chapter 9A, Section 9A-8, sub E, fire to pay fine. Is the respondent present? Yes. And you have been sworn, Mr. Chief? Yes, I have. Okay. Officer Price. For the record, LaVoisier Price, Jr., co-compliance officer for the city of Punta Gorda, and I have been sworn. This matter was before the board on March 23rd, 2022, at which time the board heard testimony, received evidence, and enters, entered its order which was received by the respondent via certified return receipt mail on March 30th, 2022. The order required the respondent to pay the fine in the amount of $500 plus case costs incurred in the amount of $10.28 upon receipt of the order. I re-inspected the city of Punta Gorda records on April 13th, 2022 and found that the creative action ordered by the board had not been taken and that the fine amount of $500 plus case costs incurred and the amount of $10.28 had not been paid. An affidavit of non-compliance and notice of hearing imposing penalty was mailed to the respondent on April 13, 2022, via certified return receipt mail, which was received by the respondent on April 18, 2022. I re-inspected the city of Punta Gorda's records on May 24, 2022, and found that the the fine amount of $500 plus case costs incurred in the amount of $10.28 had not been paid. The respondent has been in non-compliance for 55 days from March 31st, 22 to April 24th, 2022. I'm submitting an invoice in, in the amount of $18.31 for case costs incurred. My turn? Your turn. Um, so last time that this happened, it went straight to uh, putting, illegally put a lien on my house for free speech. What What is the difference this time? Um, correction from March 31st, 22 to May 24th, 2022. I said April. Mr. Levine, would you please answer that question? Well, I'm not sure what he's referring to as the last time, but there was a previous action, um, several cases brought against the respondent um, that the um, respondent took over an appeal uh, of those um, cases and um, the um, respondent's attorney requested a stay of further action relating to those cases that were taken up on appeal to the circuit court. So no further action with respect to the fines has been taken with respect to those prior cases. The case before you today is a new violation, separate and apart from the violations that were previously heard by you and taken up on appeal. And so there's been no stay requested uh, with respect to this action. Um, Mr. Sheets has another group of attorneys that are representing him in that case. Um, that case is... Um, being um, was brought into federal court, but still no requested stay uh, of the code enforcement's action in that in this new case was requested, and therefore um, we are seeking um, payment of the penalty and and, fail, uh, and and a penalty for failure to pay the fine 
that was uh, instituted by this court, uh, by this board. Thank you. I turn. Here's your answer. So again, he's not telling the truth. Four tickets last time you gave me a fine on, and you went straight to a lien in my house. You are not telling the truth. That is what you said you would do if I did not pay the fine. Straight to a lien on my house. So he is a liar again, and I do not know why I'm being called back in here. This is, this is like double jeopardy. Also, he just admitted this is out of your jurisdiction. Federal court has it. You guys already, <clears throat> you guys already screwed up. Okay, federal court has it. This is out of your hands. So what he is doing is malicious prosecution which is also illegal. When, when is this gonna stop? When I have to personally sue each and every one of you, including him, for this insanity, for free speech? Seriously, did he tell you got three more tickets coming? They were supposed to be next month, and he pushed them off until after the state because they know he's gonna get killed in state court, let alone federal court. So he is a liar. They went straight to lean last time. That's what we expected this time. And now he's making up more crap and lies for malicious prosecution, which I will file a bar complaint against your ass. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The uh, standard process is when a code enforcement order is issued by this board, it constitutes a lien under the statute. Um, there was no additional action taken to impose a lien on the property. It's automatically imposed by, by virtue of the statute and the recording of the, uh, of the action of the board. Thank you. I think, I think we've heard enough. No, I, I'm asking for a motion to stay. You don't have that right to make a motion. That's the board's responsibility. I'm asking for a stay. Mr. Chairman, he, okay. he does have the, does he? he does have the authority to request a stay. Okay. Um, and, and if you wish, you can impose that stay retroactively. But uh, at the moment, uh, there is no stay before you and nothing that would prevent right. you from moving forward, including the fact that uh, there may have been a, a filing in federal court on this case. Uh, until that court issues a, uh, an order staying any type of further action from you or, or you issue an order staying any action, um, uh, it's, it's fair game. Well, the motion has been made by the respondent to stay further action on this uh, enforcement action. Uh, I assume, does anybody want to second that motion? Well, he can't make a motion. He made, he made a request. He, yeah, he's making, he a, request. He, he's making a request. So now a it's request has been made for a motion to re I'll modify what I said. A request has been made for a motion to stay action on this enforcement action for until matters are resolved or... Um, well, this is a separate issue, is it not? It's separate. This is this is separate than what is presently mm -hmm. uh, in circuit court on appeal, um, and I said a complaint was filed in uh, in federal court. Um, I happened to speak with the attorneys that are representing the city on that case yesterday, and and they uh, are required to file an answer to that complaint. Um, that deadline has not yet been. Uh, reached and but we'll be filing an answer very in the very near future so it'll be a stay pending resolution of these matters before stay, the, in the federal case the federal case Can we make a motion to apply this fine to a lien on his home and um, no what if you whatever decision you make regarding the fine it automatically constitutes a lien on his property uh, and um, and any other personal property that he may have elsewhere in the state, that's that's the that's the provision of the statute relating to the orders. Is the is the matter in federal court um, regarding this specific um, violation, or is it a question with regard to the constitutionality of the code? It's it's the const it's this specific violation, but the allegation is that the code upon which that this violation was based is unconstitutional. Okay, so he is challenging the specific violation in federal court? Yes. Oh, all right. Okay, that motion has been submitted to the board. Is there a second? Second, Jardina. Motion for Wait, wait. No, uh, motion for I thought we made the motion about Did somebody stay? make a motion for stay? I asked if somebody, it was a motion, I can't do that. I guess okay. the, as motion the motion was read, would somebody adopt it, please? I would like to make a motion that the case is stayed uh, pending outcome of the uh, 
federal case challenging the um, the code. This violation. This violation. Thank you. Motion has been made. Is there a second to that motion? Second. And motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion on the contents or extent of the motion? Uh, the last time we did this, we were we were under the impression that uh, by granting the stay, the respondent would no longer commit additional violations. Uh, it would seem to me we're playing a little whack-a-mole right now. Uh, there is no assurance that this respondent will not continue violations if we continue to stay. And, and let me also argue, if I might, that unless or until a court of competent jurisdiction determines that the city's ordinance is unconstitutional as it relates to these violations, the, the, the city's ordinance is valid. And so the concern of continued violations is a real one, in, in our opinion. But the stay doesn't negate the fines. It, he will continue. If the federal case upholds the uh, ordinance, then all of these fines will apply that have been stayed. Um, that's true with respect to this violation. Um, and if there's a new violation uh, and brought before you again, uh, we'll have to start it all, all well, over again. I don't think Mr. Sheets would be willing or even able to not continue to violate this. So It's called free speech. No, we're not talking about free speech now. Free speech. No, we aren't. We're talking yeah, we about are. whether or not you're going to continue to come before the board. And I believe that you would continue to do this even if we asked for it's a free USA. speech. So it would be useless for to put that in as a provision Correct. with this individual. He wouldn't honor it. So any further discussion on the motion? Uh, only the fact that I'm opposed to a stay. I think uh, we should proceed in accordance with the ordinance with which we are chartered to uphold. Then I'll call a vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion is presented. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. 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 I guess we have a tie. Who's the nay? I, I lost it. So. For record, Dave McCarty, Code Compliance Survivors. Can we get a hand count so we know who voted for it? Since I can't. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Jardina. Aye. Higgins. All those opposed to the motion, please signify by saying nay. 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 Sacalato. Nay. Rich. Nay. Como. Nay. Erickson. Motion is not carried, so there will be no stay. Okay. So now the next action is to take uh, action with respect to the, the uh, imp uh, penalty imposing hearing. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Sheets, you obviously were aware of the, uh, the citation that was given to you, so, uh, and you've expressed yourself as to how, what you consider the value of the citation that was given to you. So I don't know if you really need to have any more of a presentation. So the issue before the board is how do we want to resolve uh, this violation? And, uh, so, so just for clarity, an unpaid fine by process comes back to us. If it's not paid again, what does the process do? Come back to us again? Dave McCarty, Co Client Supervisor, been sworn. Um, it's failure to pay the fine, it would come back again. Uh, this is just like a penalty hearing on any other case where the pro uh, property owner doesn't come into compliance this time, the respondent didn't come into compliance, and that's sort of the same situation as that. And the daily fine would continue until it's paid? Dave McCarty, Co Client Supervisor, have been sworn. Yes, that would continue to run. Okay. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion to resolve this uh, motion? case. Mm -hmm. Motion to find that the respondent is violation of the order in order that a fine in amount of $25 be imposed, uh, $1,375 be imposed, representing a fine of $25 per day for 55 days for noncompliance from March 31st, 2022 to May 24, 2022, plus applicable interest 
of 4.25% per annum and said fine shall continue to run until respondent comes into compliance with the Punta Gorda Code and is further ordered that the respondent is required to pay additional case costs incurred in the amount of $36.81. Motion has been made to find that the respondents have violated the order and further order that a fine in the amount of $13.75 be imposed, representing a fine of $25 per day for 55 days, plus applicable 4.25 interests and further order to pay court costs of $36.81. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Como. Motion has been made and seconded to find that the respondent is in violation of the order. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition to the motion? Nay. One nay. Motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Sheets. Fuck off. Next case, hearing imposing penalty, case number 21-81221, Code Compliance Officer Nick Faulkner, respondents Walter L. Marion and Dietrich C. Marion and Demoria Williams and Angelia Salina Marion. <laughs> 